Yeah, here we have uh, collected up a large number of tamarack twigs and we have begun processing them. Generally, the, the twigs that we gather from the tree are quite branched and some of them might be uh, too big or too small, so we select them out. And we take a typical branch that has a lot of forks on it like that, we pluck these off and are we left with the main shaft. Generally, we will make a neater bird if we use uh, pieces of branch that look like this instead of being covered with branches. You could use the branch without trimming off the side branches, but you will get a different style of bird. Here we have a, a, a handful that we feel that might make a, a, a small decoy or bird of some sort. As you get better, you can control the shape or style of the bird, but at first we usually make whatever we can it tends to turn out to look something like a partridge. Here I have a bundle of twigs, which I might sort of uh, uh, sort out a little bit by sliding the ends up and down. Sometimes the butt ends are bigger. I could break them off and make all the butt ends a similar size, and that way we'll end up with something that looks a little neater. If you have a wide variety of sizes, at a considerable uh, irregular appearance that is kind of irregular. Go through here, keep them in kind of an order, keep them from crossing too much in the handful that I'm preparing here. And straightened out. They can be quite uneven because we'll come back and trim this later with a knife. And uh, at the moment we were just, sometimes I have to slide them down up and down to get longer thicknesses out of or heavier pieces out. Experience will tell you how much of a handful you need that will give reasonable coverage to the body as these branches are going to have to cover a ball that uh, we will make with the shorter branches in a moment. better to err in the direction of putting more on here than less. We will have a few extras that we will reserve for covering the ball after the ball has been put into the bundle. So I'll leave probably about 10 of these out because invariably some gaps will form in the configuration. Before we lay this down now, we can tie the tail in. We'll save these in case we need them for, for the gaps that might form as we shape this bundle over the ball. Some that are crossing and pull out. We use a strong string that has got a compatible color with the branches. In this case, a form of kite string that's made out of nylon that's got a very significant breaking strength. And probably it's, uh, 30, 40 pound test, I imagine. And I wrap around uh, quite a bit. Uh, I often try not to tie a knot in here that I can't undo later. And sometimes when we make the decoy, we discover that uh, we could improve the appearance of it by unraveling the tail end. Uh, once the whole bird is built, we go back to the tail end and unravel it. So I'm sort of winding it in a certain way that, that it could be possible for me to, to do that. Don't normally have to do a good job there. The, the bundle now can be set aside with the binding string so that we don't have to that apart. Here behind me, I've got the trimmed off twigs, which can be rolled into a ball, the ball determining the size of your bird. So I start with the fine branches, and I start a small core, and then I add little handfuls of these not too big so you can't tie with it. And keep winding this until you have an egg-shaped core to jam into the branch. It helps, too, to tie this if you are new to the game of making this type of artifact. You might tie this with string to keep it from springing apart on you. But I'll probably manage that. Here, as you can see, the ball is moving up a little bit. Put another little handful on. It's large enough for our purposes today.
doesn't have to be perfect, but egg shape is what the, the is a nicer one than just a sphere. Here we now have the core, and we have the, the bundle that we tied previously, and we are going to open up the inside and spread out the, the branches. so that we can jam the, the ball that I'm now gripping between my knees here into the bundle like so. Hold the spine there. Now I try to arrange the branches more or less evenly over the surface of the ball. other branches that are now over here might come in handy. Every once in a while there's poor coverage because the branches were pushed over too much. And I might tuck these in like so to give us a have to be bound, but they're jammed in so they won't spring out. And you can do this wherever necessary. If you have enough in that core originally, you don't have too much of a problem. And the ends that stick out are my strings. We unreeled earlier. Okay, we get in here, and I want to push that ball in just a little bit. You need three hands. I'll wind for a short distance at about a centimeter interval. This system of making the doll, you're using one continuous string. The old-fashioned way of making the doll, you would use a heavy cord because they didn't have access to strong, fine string. They had sewing thread, so they'd wrap it with a heavy cord and then use a sailor's needle and go over the whole of the bird with uh, sewing thread, and making many, many passes, and then they removed the heavy cord. But then it would take hours, whereas here we, we can build a bird of this nature in minutes. Now I reach the main body of the bird. I look at it momentarily to figure which way the shape would, would best be arranged. And then I start shaping the neck by bending and squeezing the twigs for the neck. And you can see how the neck is developing. Now you. Once you gain some experience, you can make the neck as long or short. You can make this into a swan or a goose or a duck or whatever. In our case, we, we're going to just take it as, that, as it comes. And we here we give the neck a graceful arc my style of making birds, I usually have the bird looking over its shoulder. And what I have left here that you see at the end here can now be made into the lower jaw first usually by wrapping half of the twigs so that we're down. This type of bird has a very large looking eye. It's not really the eye. It's supposed to be the cheek patch on the Canada goose when the goose is uh, stood in a in a patch of snow. Here's the lower jaw, just about done. If your bulk is too great here at this stage, you often can pluck away branches or uh, uh, snip them out or something. And then we retrace our step back to the standing up one, and we wrap the hip.
quite a bit longer than the other the lower jaw was wrapped. There, and then we start shaping the eye by bending that down like so. And we'll include that in, in the winding. stage we might figure that we have branched the gun in there. Okay. We've gone far enough in which case we tie off the string so that uh, it won't unravel. And except for a few odd trimming jobs, the bird in this instance is completed almost. I have hitch it whatever knots I know how to keep that from undoing. Remember, if you cut the string at any one point, the whole bird can come around. There. And here we can trim off the beak. Cutting into a string. Like off any branch that seems out of place tail here. Now I could retreat and make that a stubbier tail if I so wished, or do a wide variety of things. I'm babbling this end and going back about there and then working my tail on here, but this here seems to be the shape adequately to suit my case. If you want the bird to stand, you get some heavy branches. Uh, in snow like this, you probably can make the bird uh, sit on the snow. So you might whoop, make the bird uh, stand with one leg. These can't count very well, so you can get away with one leg. On hard surfaces, you'd have to use three legs. Uh, this, if you want the bird to stand. extra long so that the anchor is here. Now if we do this right then from a higher uh, from the, uh, the uh, snow is not pressed to it, that you can see the snow through the eye patch. That, but it's sufficient to fool many birds distance, these things standing up in the snow. I guess they were hunting the geese when their geese were coming back in the spring. And in some cases, uh, when they're on their way back around here, the geese don't go, seem to go back until there's quite a bit of snow on the ground. And there you have it. The decoy out of 